The roar of the crowd, the rush of adrenaline, and the thrill of victory. Football has always been more than just a game, but as the world watches in awe at the athletic prowess of its heroes, few know the deep, dark secrets that lurk behind the scenes. For more than one quarter of professional footballers, the crushing weight of anxiety and depression looms large, threatening to derail their careers and their lives. In a high-pressure environment where emotions run rampant, it's not a matter of if psychological distress will strike, but when. The question is, can the beautiful game survive the hidden costs of its own success? Football is a popular career ambition for many young boys. However, the likelihood of becoming a professional is minimal. Professional clubs recruit players as young as 8 years old and make contract cuts until 12 years old. The fortunate players then sign two-year contracts. But between the ages of 14 and 16 years old, players have to survive the pressure in order to get a three-year contract. However, the reality is that approximately 10,000 young athletes participate in football and less than 1% will make it to professional football. As professional sports contracts are complicated to obtain and maintain, the pressure felt by competing athletes may contribute to psychological distress. Although we do not know the prevalence of psychological distress experienced by youth footballers, we do know that adolescents are not exempt from experiencing issues of mental health. The prevalence rates of psychological disorders among young people and adolescents 16 to 34 years old are high at 20 to 25 percent. In fact, the teenage period may be a key time when psychological issues begin to occur, as 75% of mental health problems start before the age of 25 years old, according to research. In the extreme case of Robert Inke, the German goalkeeper who committed suicide at the age of 33 years old, it was apparent that he felt pressure from football during his adolescent years. In the book A Life Too Short, The Tragedy of Robert Inke, his anxiety seemed to start being detrimental during his adolescence. Anki felt crippling anxiety as a 16-year-old thrown in to play with the 18-year-olds and felt debilitating emotions when he made mistakes in a game. To exemplify this, Anki said, For the whole of the next week, I had the error in front of my eyes. I couldn't get it out of my head. I couldn't forgive myself for a mistake. Following a game where he made a crucial mistake, he stayed off school for a full week and used the excuse that he was ill. There are various accounts in his book about the pressure he felt to be the best and sadly, he suffered from depression throughout his playing career. Adolescence may be a crucial time to intervene with athletes, particularly as this is a time when significant transitions occur and pressure may become significantly greater. What could have been done to support the likes of Robert and Kate? How can we alleviate the pressure of sports and ensure that individuals have adequate coping mechanisms? And in particular, how can we support those suffering from mental health issues? Within the recent report, the new strategy for sports consultation, it was emphasized that we need to ensure that if mental health problems emerge in athletes, that they receive proper care and support they need to recover. It was also noted, given the increasingly early age at which young, talented athletes are identified and put in high potential programs, we need to ensure that they are still receiving the right sort of support to help them develop in a balanced way, ensuring that if they don't achieve their dream as an athlete, they are able to pursue other options and retain other skills. With that being said, it is imperative to an athlete's well-being that we teach them about their value as a person. We should tell athletes, sport is something you do and not who you are. Of course, sport gives people an identity nevertheless. Sometimes this is an athlete's only identity. In that case, an athlete's self-worth may be contingent on their sporting performance. And this is when we need to show that they are worthy as a person as well as a performer. For those suffering from issues of mental health, creating a culture shift where mental health issues are no longer stigmatized and youth athletes feel supported both on and off the pitch, there has been a lot of good work in raising awareness of mental health. Specifically, the charity Mind made a national call to tackle mental health in sports after a number of high-profile sports people disclosed their mental health struggles. The Mental Health Charter for Sport and Recreation was launched in March 2015. The charter aims to tackle the stigma towards mental health using the power of sport. The Time to Change campaign is led by Charities Mind and Rethink Mental Illness. But to understand young players better, we must first be equipped with an understanding of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is a concept introduced by Daniel Goleman in his research on the psychological and social factors that contribute to human behavior and performance. According to Goldman, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, 
and manage one's own emotions as well as the emotions of others. Goldman identified five key components of emotional intelligence. Number one, self-awareness, the ability to recognize and understand one's own emotions, strengths, and weaknesses. Number two, self-regulation, the ability to manage one's own emotions and impulses. Number three, motivation, the ability to set and work towards goals and to persist in the face of obstacles. Number four, the ability to understand and respond to the emotions of others. Number five, Social skills, the ability to communicate effectively, build relationships, and work collaboratively with others. Research by Goldman and others has shown that emotional intelligence is the key predictor of success in both personal and professional settings. People with higher emotional intelligence tend to have better mental health, stronger relationships, and more successful careers. They are also more resilient in the face of stress and adversity. Overall, Goldman's research on emotional intelligence has helped to shed light on the important role that emotions play in human behavior and performance. To do it properly, my job, you know, to be fit all the time, to training properly all the time, to play good, because it's my life, you know, as you know, uh, the soccer in America right. and football in Europe, you know, it's, it's, it's great and it's my passion, it's what I love to do. And to be fit all the time, to be in the top of the level, many, many years, you have to be consistent. So this is what I've tried to do, to be to be good, to be uh, in a good shape, and uh, try to enjoy uh, the people. This is what I love to do. I have to improve, and I'm, I want to improve. And I see myself to do it when I'm retired, to speak for me. millions of people, advices, how to be a professional player, how to maintain your longevity, how, I'm not a psychologist, but and provide a framework for understanding how individuals can develop their emotional skills to improve their lives and relationships. Emotional intelligence can be an important aspect of training young football players as it can help them develop the skills and abilities necessary to succeed both on and off the field. Here are some ways that emotional intelligence can be incorporated into the training of young football players. Developing self-awareness. Encourage young players to reflect on their own emotions, strengths, and weaknesses. This can help them better understand their own motivations and behaviors and develop the ability to regulate their emotions during high-pressure situations. Teaching self-regulation. Teach young players strategies for managing their emotions, such as deep breathing, visualization, and positive self-talk. This can help them stay focused and composed during games and avoid making impulsive decisions. Encouraging empathy. Encourage young players to develop empathy for their teammates and opponents. This can help them better build relationships with others and develop a better understanding of how their actions and words can impact others. Fostering social skills. Encourage young players to communicate effectively with their teammates and coaches and to work collaboratively to achieve team goals. This can help them develop stronger relationships with others and improve their overall performance on the field. By incorporating emotional intelligence into their training programs, coaches can help young football players develop the skills and abilities necessary to succeed both on and off the field and to become more well-rounded individuals. Thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on more amazing videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Don't keep this goodness to yourself. Share it with your friends too. Until our next exciting video, stay tuned.